What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about 5 NBA players who pretty much only had one good season in the NBA, 5 of the biggest one hit wonders. First we have got Lance Stevenson, he actually looked very good in the 2013 playoffs, especially in the Heat, but in the 2013-2014 season he should have been an all-star. He led the league in triple doubles, averaged 14 points, 7.2 rebounds and 5 assists a game. He looked extremely good for the Pacers team who ended up first in the Eastern Conference, and then he signed a contract with the Charlotte Hornets and the next year only averaged 8.2 points per game while shooting 17% from three. Yes, you heard me right, 17%. And the Bobcats had made the playoffs the year before Lance Stevenson went and when Lance Stevenson signed they were supposed to become a decent Eastern Conference team. They actually got worse with Lance Stevenson, which is mad. Which, well, actually, no, it's not mad considering he only shot 17% from three and 37% from the field. He did look good at the end of the season with the Memphis Grizzlies, so there's a good chance he'll pick it up. I would not be surprised if he's really only remembered for that one spectacular season in Indiana. Next, we have got the guy drafted over Steph Curry, and it is Johnny Flynn. Johnny Flynn had a good rookie season when he was starting at the point for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He averaged 13.5 points a game and 4.4 assists per game. Although he did average only three turnovers a game, it still wasn't that bad a year. It was his first year in the league and things were looking up. He was looking like he wasn't going to be a bad NBA player and while Curry was better, probably better in that rookie year, it still didn't look like that bad a pick. And he hit one of the biggest sophomore slumps I've ever seen. He then averaged nearly the same amount of turnovers, 3.4 assists and 5.3 points per game in his second year in the league and in his third year in the league he only played in 29 games so a year and a half after having a great rookie year, he was out of the NBA. Now, and now a few years later with Steph winning two MVPs and an NBA championship, people are looking at this like it's one of the biggest busts in, of the last 10 years and who can blame them? But if you were looking at this from their rookie campaign, you would have never thought it because Johnny Flynn actually had a really solid rookie year. That's why he's on this list. Next we have got Bobby Simmons. And while he did have, you could argue that he did have two very good years, where he averaged 16.4 and 13.4. I think that without doubt his 04 05 season with the Clippers was his best year in the NBA. He averaged 16.4 points per game, 6 rebounds per game, a steal and a half, and 3 assists per game. Apart from the next year where he averaged 13.4, he never averaged more than 7 points per game. His scoring picked up dramatically and it dropped as quickly as it picked up. Years, and three years after averaging 16.4 points per game, he was only averaging 5.3 points per game. And that one season, 2004-2005, the Clippers, where he averaged 13 point, where he averaged 16.4 points per game, was pretty much the peak of his career. He looked like he could have been a good player, but in the end, that season was a was a one-off and looked to be in a fluke. Next, we have got Jerome James. And while he was never a really good NBA player and he never averaged more than 5.4 points per game in the regular season. He actually had a really good playoffs in 2004-2005 for the Seattle Supersonics, where he averaged 12.5 points per game, 7 rebounds a game, and nearly 2 blocks per game. The New York Knicks signed him to a 6-year, $30 million con dollar contract, which at the time was a lot of money, and they were going to want to use him as a backup center, but in the end, he scored barely over 200 total points for the, ne for the Knicks, and only played in less than played in less than 100 games and did not average more than 3 points a game in any one season and they were paying 5 million a year while Jerome James did not have was not a one season wonder he was a one series wonder and in my opinion that's probably worse than being a one season wonder especially when you get a big contract because of that one single series and last we've got one of just the most confusing ones it's Mike James it was, it was a journeyman, he was playing for a lot of different teams. He was averaging around 11-12 points per game when he was playing with the Celtics, Pistons, um, Bucks and Rockets. And then all of a sudden he went to the Toronto Raptors and averaged 20.3 points per game, shot 44% from 3 and 47% from the field. Which is mad, and averaged 6 assists per game. That's an incredible season. I know the Raptors were not very good, but they are, they are very, very good numbers. And you know what happened? The next year his points per game total halved. It halved. And he also nearly halved his assist numbers and averaged a rebound and a half less a game. So that one season is just, if you look at this guy's stats, everything he did better that season. 
it just looked so out of place for someone's career. It was as if he suddenly improved so much and then went right back to the way he was. Whether he it was just a system in Toronto, whether it was just him having more shots, who knows. But it, but just from looking at it, this guy has just the, the weirdest rise to fame and fall from fame I've ever seen. He is the definition of a one season wonder. When he did have a 12 year NBA career, that one season in Toronto was an absolute standout. And if you take out that, that season, he had a solid, probably below average career. But if you add in a 20 point, six assist season, you can't say that he had a bad career. So in the end, it's just very, very confusing looking this up, and without doubt, Mike James is the is the poster boy of one-year wonders in the NBA. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.